Welcome to the virtual presentation of the 2020 Atlantic Book Awards. It has been the custom to start our annual celebration by acknowledging the land on which we gather for the Atlantic Book Awards Gala. With this year's presentation being held online, we're aware that a singular land acknowledgement does not capture the richness of our distribution across many locations in Atlantic Canada and beyond. Because the majority of the organizers of the Atlantic Book Awards and Festival are located in Chibuktuk, also known as Halifax, we would like to share the land acknowledgement that is used here. This virtual celebration was produced in Mi'kma'ki, the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. We recognize the peace and friendship treaties signed between the British Crown and the Mi'kmaq from 1760 to 1769. We are treaty people, and we have rights and responsibilities as Mi'kmaq and settlers alike. People watching this video from elsewhere are invited to consider their own position with regard to the land where they find themselves. We're delighted to present all the outstanding authors, illustrators, and publishers shortlisted for awards this year, and to announce the winners of the 13 different awards that make up the Atlantic Book Awards. We'll begin with the two awards that honor an author's first book. They are both named for Margaret and John Savage, who in the late 1980s established the city of Dartmouth as a regional leader in celebrating Atlantic books and writing. Here are this year's nominees for the Margaret and John Savage First Book Award, Fiction. Terry Doyle, for Dig, published by Breakwater Books. James Gregor, for Going Dutch, a novel, published by Simon & Schuster. Amy Spurway, for Crow published by Goose Lane Editions. And the winner is... Amy Spurway for Crow. The jury for the Margaret and John Savage First Book Award had this to say about the winning title. Amy Spurway's debut novel, Crow, is gritty, raw, funny, unexpected, and heartfelt. Crow tells the story of a woman, nicknamed Crow, who leaves behind her glamorous life in Toronto and returns home to Cape Breton after she is diagnosed with inoperable brain tumours. Now living with her mother in a small trailer, Crow reconnects with the eccentric and quirky people from her past and untangles some family secrets. The novel's remarkable cast of characters will make you laugh and cry, sometimes on the same page. Hi, I'm Amy Spurway, and I'm pleased to accept the Margaret and John Savage First Book Award for my novel, Crow. My deepest thanks and appreciation go out to the sponsors of this award, Royden Trainer and the family of Margaret and John Savage, to the panel of judges for the time and dedication they put into making this selection, and to the Atlantic Book Awards Society for bringing together this year's awards in the face of so much disruption and uncertainty. These days, it's not hard to look around at the world, shrug and say, well, the arse is ediver. But I contend that, in fact, the arse is not ediver. It's just being rearranged, which gives us a tremendous opportunity to connect more deeply with what really matters, with social, economic, and environmental justice, with our sorrows and our joys, with each other, and with the many stories of who we were, who we are, and who we want to be. Atlantic Canada is home to so many extraordinarily talented writers, and I urge you to seek out their work. You might start with the names on this year's Atlantic Book Award shortlist, but don't stop there. Find more stories that make you laugh and cry. Stories that surprise, that challenge, that move you. Our public libraries and local bookstores can undoubtedly help you find what you're looking for, and now's a great time to tap into their wealth of expertise and to support these vital community resources. Many heartfelt thanks to the entire team at Goose Lane Editions for their tremendous work and support in bringing Crow into the world, with a special shout out to editor extraordinaire Bethany Gibson for her wisdom and guidance, and for so willingly undertaking what amounted to a crash course in Cape Breton Smack Talk. 
And thank you to all those who buy, borrow, and share books. In the ecosystem of stories, readers play a role of utmost importance. It is in the minds of readers that our stories come alive, and without you, it's just a bunch of words on a page. Putting those words on the page can be a lonely endeavor, and I'm immensely grateful for the conversations and connections I've had with the people who welcomed Crow into their lives. Finally, thanks to my family. To my mom, Valerie, for letting me steal so many of her colorful turns of phrase for this book, and for being both my toughest critic and my biggest fan. And to my dad for teaching me the importance of paying taxes and who made me promise that I would thank him if I ever got to give an awards acceptance speech. So, Fraser Patterson, consider yourself officially thanked. And of course, to my husband, Matthew, and my kids, Neela, Coco, and Macy, who have relentlessly loved and supported me through the many emotional roller coaster rides I took over the course of Crow's creation and publication. I know they're just itching to do it all again. Thank you for tuning in today, and I look forward to being a part of the 2021 Atlantic Book Awards celebration. Now, as my dear sainted mother would say, get out and blow the stink off of ya. Thanks. Kudos to the three nominees for the Margaret and John Savage First Book Award for Nonfiction. Gemma Hickey for Almost Feral, published by Breakwater Books. Lois Legg for Wounded Hearts, Memories of the Halifax Protestant Orphan's Home, published by Nimbus Publishing. Allison Watson for Transplanted, my Cystic Fibrosis Double Lung Transplant Story, published by Nimbus Publishing. And the winner is Gemma Hickey for Almost Feral. Here's what the jury had to say. Gemma Hickey writes with honesty and heart. Almost Feral is not an easy story, but it's an important one. Gemma's strength and bravery shine through in every part of this journey, from childhood to adult, and from one side of Newfoundland to the other. Through beautiful prose, the reader travels Gemma's 908-kilometer walk, an endeavor to raise money for survivors of religious institutional abuse, and experiences lessons in faith, tolerance, identity, solitude, and love. The Alistair MacLeod Prize for Short Fiction was inaugurated in 2016 to honour the legacy of one of this region's and this country's most gifted and admired writers. Here are the 2020 nominees. Ian Colford for A Dark House and Other Stories, published by Vagrant Press. Terry Doyle for Dig published by Breakwater Books. Martha Wilson, for Nosy White Woman, published by Biblioasis. And the winner is... Martha Wilson, for Nosy White Woman. One of the jury members called Nosy White Woman thoroughly enjoyable, compelling, and very deserving of this award. She wrote... The stories were all so real and relational, dealing with the connections and complications found in human interactions. Martha Wilson brings wit, humor, and compassion to all the characters' struggles and concerns. I look forward to reading more from Martha Wilson. More than a dozen works by Atlantic Canadian scholars were submitted for this year's Atlantic Book Award for Scholarly Writing. Entries epitomized the award's central criteria, likeliness to have a significant literary, social, and academic impact in the areas of social sciences and humanities. Here are this year's nominees. Re Kroll for Shaped by Silence, Stories from Inmates of the Good Shepherd Laundries and Reformatories, published by Iser Books. Lyndon McIntyre for 
The Wake, The Deadly Legacy of a Newfoundland Tsunami, published by HarperCollins Canada. L. Jane McMillan. For Truth and Conviction, Donald Marshall Jr. and the Mi'kmaq Quest for Justice, published by UBC Press. And the winner is Jane McMillan for Truth and Conviction, Donald Marshall Jr. and the Mi'kmaq Quest for Justice. This is what the jury had to say. What a story. Donald Marshall Jr. is well known for being at the center of two of the most important legal sagas in Canadian history. Truth and Conviction not only retells those stories and puts them in a single volume, it also gives us invaluable insights into the challenges of actually carving out Indigenous justice in the white man's world. Author L. Jane McMillan, Marshall's one-time partner and is co-accused in the fishing dispute, is a recognized scholar in this field. Through her, we get an account that is at the same time intimate, comprehensive, instructive, and inspirational. Hi, my name is Jane McMillan. I'm the author of Truth and Conviction, Donald Marshall Jr. and the Mi'kmaq Quest for Justice, and I am absolutely honored to be the recipient of the 2020 Atlantic Book Award for Scholarly Writing. Many thanks to everybody on the jury panel who selected the book, and uh, congratulations to all of the nominees of this year's Atlantic Book Awards. I, I really wish uh, Junior Marshall was here to share in this acknowledgement with me today. Yeah, his, I mean, obviously this book would not have been possible with, without him or without the support of the Marshall family, so I'm very grateful to, to the hundreds of people who participated in the research for this book over uh, decades of work. It was a, a long journey and one that I am so uh, privileged to have shared with Donald Marshall. If Junior was here today, I think he would tell us that, that his journey uh, in the fight against racism and systemic discrimination is one that we must continue to fight every day. He would say, don't give up, uh, continue on and, and stand up because we can together make change. We can end racism. We can fight systemic discrimination in the justice system. We can uh, work together and acknowledge Indigenous rights and treaty rights and honour the the legacy of the Mi'kmaq Nation and honor Donald Marshall Jr.'s legacy as well. So I encourage you to please uh, think about supporting Innocence Canada and, and, and all of their work in trying to eradicate wrongful convictions. Uh, there is no greater tragedy in this world in encountering systemic discrimination and racism in the justice system and then being blamed for a crime uh, that you did not commit. Uh, so thank you very much again to, to Laura Carter for making this, this event happen in a time of COVID, to the uh, Halifax Library, to uh, Indigos and Chapters for supporting this work, and to my press, UBC Press, and Leslie Erickson, the wonderful editor of this, this text, and, and uh, everyone who supported this work. Uh, many, many thanks. This, this means the world to me. All the best. Thank you. The Evelyn Richardson Nonfiction Award is named for the Governor General's award-winning author of We Keep a Light and is one of four Atlantic Book Awards administered by the Writers' Federation of Nova Scotia. Here are the nominees for this year's Richardson Award. Mark de Villiers for Hell and Damnation, A Sinner's Guide to Eternal Torment, published by University of Virginia Press. The Honorable Dr. Mayan Francis for Mayan Francis, An Honorable Life, published by Nimbus Publishing. Amy McKay for Daughter of Family G, a memoir of cancer genes, love, and fate, published by Knopf Canada. And the winner is Amy McKay for Daughter of Family G, a memoir of cancer genes, love, and fate. Here's what the jury had to say about Amy's book. In this deeply affecting memoir about living with hereditary cancer, daughter of family G's pugilistic protagonists are none other than free will and foreordination. With a reporter's eye and a poet's grace, Amy McKay writes perceptively, hauntingly, wisely, 
and even tenderly about them, knowing that the skin she has in their game is her own. This marvel of personal journalism is essential reading for anyone who ever had a hope. The Democracy 250 Atlantic Book Award for Historical Writing was inaugurated as a legacy project following the 2009 celebrations of Nova Scotia's pioneering role in Canadian democracy. Here are this year's nominees. Marion Bruce for Listening for the Dead Bells, published by Island Studies Press. Gerald Hallowell for As British as the King, Lunenburg County During the First World War, published by Nimbus Publishing. Andrew Theobald, for Dangerous Enemy Sympathizers, Canadian Internment Camp B, 1940-1945, published by Goose Lane Editions. And the winner is... Andrew Theobald, for Dangerous Enemy Sympathizers, Canadian Internment Camp B, 1940-1945. One of the jurors for this award described Andrew's writing in this book as very accessible and easygoing, condensing written and oral history into a captivating narrative about internment camps in New Brunswick. Hello, my name is Andrew Theobald, author of Dangerous Enemy Sympathizers, Canadian Internment Camp B, 1940 to 1945. I am deeply honored to have been awarded the 2020 Democracy 250 Atlantic Book Award for Historical Writing. The Democracy 250 Award is a particular distinction because it was created in recognition of Nova Scotia's becoming the first British colony to enact responsible government in 1848. Safeguarding that tremendous accomplishment remains our collective duty, especially in times of crisis. Dangerous Enemy Sympathizers is directly related, as at its core it is the story of a suspension of basic civil liberties that can never be justified. Even today, as we fast approach the 75th anniversary of the closing of Canada's Second World War internment camps, numerous topical issues are raised by the book, particularly those concerning the powers of the state and refugee and immigration policy. Thank you to the Atlantic Book Awards and Festival and all of their dedicated staff for making the 2020 virtual gala such a success in such surreal circumstances. Congratulations as well to all of the other winners. Amy Spurway's Crow was a real favorite of mine. And my fellow nominees for the Democracy 250 Award, Marion Bruce's Listening for the Dead Bells and Gerald Hallowell's As British as the King, Lunenburg County During the First World War. Please also allow me to thank Goose Lane Editions, the publisher of Dangerous Enemy Sympathizers. The team at Goose Lane, including Suzanne Alexander, Julie Scriver, Alan Shepard, Nathaniel Moore, and Stephanie Sirois, designed and promoted a beautiful book. I would also like to thank the New Brunswick Military Heritage Project and the Brigadier Milton F. Gregg, VC, Center for the Study of War and Society of the University of New Brunswick. They commissioned Dangerous Enemy Sympathizers, and expertly guided it through to publication. I wish to particularly thank Mark Milner, the Gregg Center's director, and Brent Wilson, the editor emeritus of the book series. The New Brunswick Military Heritage book series is doing so much to raise awareness of Atlantic Canada's uniquely captivating history. A huge thank you to Ed Casey of the New Brunswick Internment Camp Museum. Ed and his colleagues, including a generation of summer students, have done remarkable work preserving and sharing the history of Camp B, which was located near the museum's home in Minto, New Brunswick. I would further like to acknowledge my parents. My father, Greg Theobald, was for three decades a history teacher at St. John High School, and he and my mother, Bronwyn McIntyre, instilled in me, among many other things, a love of history. Most importantly, Dangerous Enemy Sympathizers was made possible through the love and steadfast support of my incredible wife, Afrat, and our children, Nori and Rami. Dangerous Enemy Sympathizers features a memorable series of events that encompass every kind of human drama and emotion via a diverse cast of characters too extraordinary for fiction. Ultimately, however, the story of internment can't be was, against long odds, a positive one. Although established during humanity's worst moments, the camp's history demonstrates this region and its people at their best. 
I encourage all readers to further explore Atlantic Canadian stories. There's certainly no time like the present. See you next year at the 2021 Atlantic Book Awards and Festival. Thank you. Our next two awards celebrate excellence in books for children. The Anne Connor Brimer Award for Atlantic Canadian Children's Literature was established by the family of Anne Elizabeth Connor Brimer, a dedicated educator and Atlantic officer for the Canadian Children's Book Centre. Here are this year's nominees. Sherry Fitch, For Everybody's Different, on Everybody's Street, published by Nimbus Publishing. Wesley King, for A World Below, published by Simon & Schuster, Paula Wiseman Books. Rebecca Thomas, for I'm Finding My Talk, published by Nimbus Publishing. And the winner is... Sherry Fitch, for Everybody's Different on Everybody Street. The jury had this to say. Sherry Fitch's unique voice, its powerfully charming and sure rhythms and rhymes, has given us a children's book that is undoubtedly a classic. Its playful rhymes celebrate the beautiful uniqueness of all people, while reminding us that there is always more than meets the eye. While we all have hopes and dreams, some of us struggle in ways that aren't always easy to see. Yes, we are all beautifully and inherently unique, but it is equally true that we are also deeply, intrinsically connected. Sherry Fitch has written a love song for the world. Hi, this is Sherry Fitch. I'm shooting this video myself um, in my office. I'm here today to say thank you to the Atlantic Book Awards um, for giving me the great honor of receiving the Anne Connor Brimer Award this year for children's literature for the book Everybody's Different on Everybody's Street. I knew Anne and um, in fact she paid a visit to me when I was 30 years old and a one book author and made me promise not to um, give up writing. Like three times she made me make a promise to her. So, of course, I'm thinking about Anne right now and her family. I'm also thinking about Liz Crocker because Liz Crocker worked with Anne and started Woozle's Bookstore. And um, they cancelled my book and um, believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. Toes in my nose. That was the book. And Liz Crocker was the one who said to me, Sherry, would you consider writing a book that might spark awareness and start to break down the stigma against mental illness and addiction. This is way back in the year 2000, 2001. And I said no at first, and my husband said, you know you have to do it. So Everybody's Different on Everybody's Street came from when I was walking down the street in New York and thinking of all the people coming towards me and all the stories we didn't know behind every person that we saw. But I really wrote this book for my son, Dustin. Dustin struggled from the time he was six years old, later from mental illness and later from addictions. So when I found out last week that this book won the award, beautiful illustrations by Emma Fitzgerald. Patrick Murphy was the one who said, let's make this a book. Whitney Moran has a vision and brought it to fruition. Um, When I found out that this book won last week, I have to tell you, um, it wasn't hooray. It was more like um, I started to cry and probably haven't stopped crying since. You see, the thing is, the vision of the world in that book is right now so far from the world that we're living in. I see division, not connectedness. I see hatred and not love. I see people fighting because of their difference and not coming together. It's, um, it's hard. It's hard to win an award for a book when really what you'd rather have is your son still alive than any award. For any book you wrote that gives hope the judges said that this was a love song to the world and this book really was a love song to the world and maybe we can still have faith that um, one day everybody will realize that everybody's traveling on everybody's street that's what everybody knows down on everybody's street yes everyone is everyone and anyone you meet that's what everybody knows down on everybody's street. So thank you so much. I hope uh, the Atlantic Book Awards, you take $1,000 and donate it to the Nova Scotia Mental Health Foundation. And also maybe you could start um, uh, 
put that other thousand dollars towards a, a, an award for social justice, maybe in the name of Rita Jo. I had a pick this year for this book and it was Rebecca Thomas. I love that book so much, Rebecca. And she's a young woman, poet, writer, who grew up on a book called Toes in My Nose. So see, there's good circles going around in the world. And I do thank you, I'm very grateful, but let's try to make the vision that's in that book come, come true. Okay, thank you everybody. You're my friends, I know you. Maybe next year, Maple Murples will be open again and you can come down and buy lots of books. Bye. The Lillian Shepard Memorial Award for Excellence in Illustration is named in honor of a longtime buyer for The Book Room in Halifax, a lifelong lover of books. Here are the illustrators shortlisted for the 2020 award. Denise Gallagher, illustrator for Peg Bearskin, a traditional Newfoundland tale, written and adapted by Andy Jones and Philip Din from a story told by Mrs. Elizabeth Brewer, published by Running the Goat Books. Danielle Loranger, illustrator for Un Géant dans la Tête, Written by Danielle Loranger, published by Bouton d'Or Acadie. Sydney Smith, illustrator for Small in the City, written by Sydney Smith and published by Groundwood Books. And the winner is Sydney Smith for Small in the City. The citation says, our jury began discussing this book by talking about Sidney being a genius. His work is so amazing that a reader doesn't need to read the words but can follow the story through the illustrations alone. Indeed, the most powerful moment in the story has no words, just a full-spread illustration that creates a poignant and crucial moment in the plot. This book is much like a graphic novel in that it guides the reader to experience the story through the illustrations, and the text can be minimal because the illustrations say so much. The Jim Connors Dartmouth Book Award for Fiction is named in honor of a longtime supporter of the Dartmouth Book Awards. Here are the books shortlisted this year. The Difference, written by Marina Endicott, published by Knopf Canada. Broken Symmetry, written by Rosalie Osmond, published by Nevermore Press. Crow, written by Amy Spurway, published by Goose Lane Editions. And the winner is Marina Endicott for The Difference. The jury called Marina's novel well-crafted and exquisitely written and described it like this. What on the surface is a good rollicking nautical adventure taking us from Yarmouth, Nova Scotia to the South Pacific Seas is actually a vessel embodying the emotional and soul-searching journey of self-discovery taking place in the minds and hearts of the main characters. The jury said that, among other things, the novel explores notions of what constitutes home and family, finding one's way in both the physical and moral world, and, with ties into the history and devastating consequences of the residential school system in Canada, reconciliation on a personal and global level. Endicott creates a stunning world that is equally heartbreaking and breathtaking. The J. M. Abraham Poetry Award is named in memory of Father Joseph Murray Abraham, a missionary and humanitarian and a prolific writer. It is administered by the Writers' Federation of Nova Scotia. Congratulations to the 2020 nominees. Tammy Armstrong for Year of the Metal Rabbit, published by Gaspero Press. Anne Compton for Small Holding, published by Fitzhenry and Whiteside. Lucas Crawford for Belated Briss of the Brainsick, Published by Nightwood Editions. And the winner is... Lucas Crawford for Belated Briss of the Brainsick. 
In its citation, the jury said, Lucas Crawford's belated bris of the brain sick is filled with wit, humor, and fearless vulnerability. Using every tool and toy at his disposal, Crawford dazzles with tightly crafted formal poems, list poems, prose poems, an erotic short story, multilingual puns, and coinages that fizz and zip through the book, revealing the emotional, mental, and physical fallout of a family secret finally exposed. These zesty, brutal, punny, lusty poems explore a harrowing chapter in the poet's life, but never tumble into the echo chamber of confession. Instead, Crawford reaches out to the reader with compassion and insight. We need more poems like these. Hello everyone, uh, this is Lucas Crawford, just joining you from uh, Yaletown here in Vancouver. Uh, yes, I am a New Brunswick poet, somehow I've uh, ended up out here for part of this pandemic adventure we're all on. Just wanting to say thank you very much for this honor, the J.M. Abraham Poetry Award. Uh, as someone who grew up in rural Nova Scotia and, I don't know, I was away for 10, 10 years or so and then back in New Brunswick, uh, being recognized, seen, understood, in any way appreciated by my fellow uh, Atlantic writers, readers, and poets is very important to me and, and very meaningful to me, so thank you very much. Mainly, though, I, I want to say it's especially an honor to win this in a year where there were so many wonderful poetry collections written by Atlantic Canadian writers. Of course that is the case every year, but let me take my, my second minute here to, to draw your attention to um, a, a few of those that hopefully you'll, if you haven't read, um, maybe you'll grab or you'll grab it and, and reread it. Um, Douglas Walburn Goff's Crow Gulch. Shannon Webb Campbell's I Am a Body of Land, Nolan Natasha's I Can Hear You, Can You Hear Me, Bart Votor's The Truth About Facts, Matthew Guathme's The Latest on Folk Tales, sorry, Our, our Latest in Folk Tales, um, I have read it, it's yellow, it's beautiful, get it, um, Jennifer Houle's Virga, Ariel Twist's um, Disintegrate, Dissociate, Dominique Bechard's One Dog Town, and of course the books of my two fellow shortlisted poets, uh, Year of the Metal Rabbit by Tammy Armstrong and by Anne Compton Smallholding. Go grab them, read them, uh, enjoy, struggle, go do your own writing too, because uh, I want to read it. And what's my, um, what's my parting shot? Thank you to anyone who helped inspire these poems or helped me get through the shit that did inspire these poems, especially Carmen Ellison and Trini Finley. Um, as someone um, lucky enough to see the some of the future of Atlantic Canadian poetry um, teaching at UNB, I just, whew, we are in good hands. You have no idea what's coming. I can't wait to listen to their awkward acceptance speeches, but theirs will be far less awkward than mine. Thank you again. Take care. The Robbie Robertson Dartmouth Book Award for Nonfiction is named in honor of Robert Archibald Robertson. When he passed away in 2010, this community leader was the longest serving member of the Dartmouth Kiwanis Club who sponsored this award in his memory. Here are the books nominated this year. Grandfather's House, Returning to Cape Breton, written by Clive Doucette, published by Nimbus Publishing. Daughter of Family G, a memoir of cancer genes, love, and fate, written by Amy McKay, published by Knopf Canada. Ghosts Within, Journeying Through PTSD, Written by Gary Leach, published by Fernwood Publishing. And the winner is Amy McKay for Daughter of Family G, a memoir of cancer genes, love, and fate. Here's what the Dartmouth Book Awards jury had to say. 
Even though it's a personal story, McKay tells it in a way that makes it a universal experience. McKay writes with a passion that is absent of self-pity. It's about a love between child and parent. The reader grows to love her ancestors, and her descriptions of her ancestors make it feel like McKay knew them personally. This book stirs up emotion and shows McKay's courage. In sharing her story, she brings what has plagued her family to the world. Sharing her experience is a courageous thing, and her story deserves to be celebrated. We're down to the last two awards. The Atlantic Publishers Marketing Association Best Atlantic Published Book Award goes to an Atlantic Canadian publisher whose book best exemplifies excellence and achievement in publishing. The jury for this award considers all of the elements involved in getting the book in the hands of readers. The author of the winning title also receives a cash prize. Here are the exceptional books nominated for the 2020 award. Almost Feral, written by Gemma Hickey, published by Breakwater Books. I Lost My Talk, written by Rita Joe, and I'm Finding My Talk, written by Rebecca Thomas, companion books, both illustrated by Pauline Young and published by Nimbus Publishing. Land Beyond the Sea, written by Kevin Major, published by Breakwater Books. Before we reveal the winner, the jury wanted to share that they were extremely impressed with the amount of work that Atlantic Canadian publishers put into the marketing and promotion of their books. They wrote, At a time when it's more vital than ever that Canadian readers are aware of and have access to Canadian books, the jury wishes to commend all publishers who submitted to the Best Atlantic Published Book Award on the strength of their promotional endeavors and the hard work, energy, and imagination put into marketing these books across our region and beyond, from small local communities to international markets. The winner of the 2020 APMA Best Atlantic Published Book Award is Breakwater Books for Almost Feral by Gemma Hickey. About this book, the jury said, Almost Feral is a significant achievement and a brave book, documenting prominent social activist Gemma Hickey's historic 908-kilometer walk across Newfoundland to raise funds and awareness for survivors of religious institutional abuse. In a well-put-together narrative, Hickey delivers a remarkable story of self-discovery, engaging in topics of LGBTQ plus rights, abuse and recovery, and community. A bold and impactful book, published with impressive sales results and wonderfully received. Hey, how's it going? Gemma Hickey here, author of Almost Feral, coming to you live from my office in the City of Legends, St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador. I'm still processing the news that my memoir won both the Atlantic Publishers Marketing Association Best Atlantic Book Award and the Margaret and John Savage First Book Award in the nonfiction category. I feel like this isn't just a win for me. It's a win for LBGTQ2 plus youth. It's a win for survivors of sexual abuse. It's a win for anyone who's ever felt alone or has struggled to find their way. My walk across Newfoundland, the narrative framework of my book, is a metaphor for life. One step at a time, one foot in front of the other, that's how we arrive at a place where we can welcome ourselves home. Congrats to all of the nominees and winners. It's an honor to be among you to celebrate all that Atlantic Canada has to offer. I can't wait to meet you in print this summer as I curl up and read all of these incredible titles. But I do hope to meet you all in person someday. And hey, the Atlantic bubble is open now. So uh, come for a visit and I'll show you a time. Special thanks to the Friesens and the Savage family for sponsoring these awards. Heartfelt thanks to the organizers of the Atlantic Book Awards for their continued support and promotion of Atlantic Canadian authors. 
big shout out to my publisher, Breakwater Books, for believing in my work. And big love to my partner, family, and friends for, well, everything. Thanks again. And finally, we have the prestigious Thomas Rattle Atlantic Fiction Award, named for Thomas Head Rattle, author of such classic novels as His Majesty's Yankees, The Governor's Lady, and The Nymph and the Lamp. T. H. Rattle's son, Dr. Thomas Rattle, was instrumental in creating this generously funded prize in his father's honor. At $25,000, the Rattle is the largest literary prize in Atlantic Canada and one of the largest in the country. It is administered by the Writers' Federation of Nova Scotia. Congratulations to all three nominees for the 2020 Thomas Rattle Atlantic Fiction Award. Jamie Burnett for Crocus's Hatch from Snow, published by Vagrant Press. Michael Crummy for The Innocents, published by Doubleday Canada. Shandy Mitchell for The Waiting Hours, published by Viking Canada. And the winner is Michael Crummy for The Innocents. Here is the jury's citation. The perfect marriage of language and content, Michael Crummy's masterpiece distills the history of Newfoundland's colonization into a dark creation myth set against the presence of the island's indigenous people. This epic tale of two orphaned siblings, the daughter and son of two stray settlers, transcends realism and conventional historical fiction to capture the terms of their survival in a raw, visceral way. A brilliant novel of darkness and light, of violence and familial love that achieves the realm of myth, The Innocence is an allegory for our time, not just about individuals' resilience, but about our communal need to embrace the newcomer and the familiar as a matter of survival.
Hats off to all the nominees for all of the 2020 Atlantic Book Awards, and congratulations to this year's winners. While we're sorry we couldn't gather for an in-person gala this year, we look forward to hosting all of the 2020 winners at next year's gala, slated to take place in Halifax on May 13th, 2021. Core funding for the Atlantic Book Awards and Festival comes from the Department of Canadian Heritage via the Canada Book Fund. The nonprofit Atlantic Book Awards Society is grateful to all our sponsors and supporters and wishes to extend particular thanks to Halifax Public Libraries for their assistance with our virtual festival. Thank you for watching and keep reading Atlantic Canadian books.